In this video, we're going to see my Border Collie Venture make a mistake on this two jump sequence. What I want is a threadle through the gap, and what I'm going to get is a 180. So let's take a look. All right, so we have our error. Now, if I feel good about my handling, and I do in this spot, then there is a gap in my dog's understanding, and I need to help my dog to get this right. And there is a right way and a wrong way to help. So let's start off by looking at the wrong way to help my dog, and that is changing my handling, doing a whole bunch of stuff that I wouldn't normally do for a threadle to try to get him between that those two jumps. So now I got the threadle, but I changed my handling, which means the gap in my dog's understanding of the threadle handling has not been filled. He still doesn't understand the threadle handling. I was just able to get through this particular sequence right now using that handling band-aid. So what are the right ways to help our dog? How do we make it easier without changing our handling? Well, there's a couple of different ways. One way is to change the distance. So you can see I've moved this jump over by several feet, that makes the threadle easier. So I'm going to change the distance here. Over. Here, here, here. Over. And he had plenty of room to make that threadle and did it beautifully. So changing the distance is a great way to help your dog. Now let's look at another way, placement of reward. So here we're back to the original placement of these jumps. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to handle the way I normally would, but I'm going to drop a toy on my dog's line to help him be right. And he's also going to be seeing my handling while he's doing that. So we see the toy right here thrown down. It's an added benefit that it's in my outside arm. So the outside arm cue and throwing down the toy becomes a little bit of the arm cue there. He's going to go in and get that toy. That's the end of that repetition. I successfully got him between the jumps. So that's another way to help my dog without changing my handling. Another way we have is to make the entire sequence easier in some way. And the way that I like to do this with jumps is to lower the jumps. So the jump height is not really a part of this skill. So I can lower the jump height. He can take away some of that mental energy he's reserving for jumping and instead focus on my handling. And then once I've got my dog successfully doing a sequence, and this may be several days later in our training pro pro uh, process, I like to make it ridiculous. Let's really test that skill, make sure he understands it, and make sure that he is responding instantly to that cue. And we're going to do that by doing the opposite of some of the things we did to make it easier. Putting the jumps further apart made it easier. We're going to put these two jumps closer together to make it harder. So the next time you're out on the practice field and your dog makes a mistake, don't change your handling. Find other ways to make it easier for your dog.